Welcome to the world of the Byzantines. Historians use the words Byzantium and Byzantine to differentiate it from the Western Roman Empire, but the Byzantine emperor still used the title Emperor of Rome. 284 marks the year Diocletian split the empire, and the eastern half is what historians call the Byzantine world. It was the Emperor Constantine who beat out all his rivals and moved the capital to Byzantium. He renamed it Constantinople. At first he, like most Roman emperors, was no fan of Christianity. But in the year 313, when he was about to ride into battle, he sees a vision of a cross. When he is successful in winning the battle, he believed the Christian God helped him win. In the same year, he issued the Edict of Milan, outlawing the persecution of Christians. Many people also converted to Christianity to win his favor, but Christianity doesn't become the state religion until 380 CE. During Constantine's reign, the church was embroiled in controversy over the Arians. They were Christians who were not Catholic. They were mostly Gen Germanic people who had converted from paganism, but they did not believe in the Trinity. They believed that Jesus was less than God. To the papacy and the church hierarchy, this was considered heresy, or a belief contrary to the church doctrine and therefore punishable. Constantine and all subsequent Byzantine emperors did not yield to church authority. Instead, they practiced caesar papism, which meant that the emperor, not the pope, was the head of the church. Probably the most renowned emperors of Byzantium were Justinian and Theodora, who ruled from 527 CE as co-regents until 546 when Theodora died and Justinian continued to rule by himself until his death in 565. The emperor Justin I was his uncle and even before his death, he was helping his uncle run the empire. Together, they passed a series of laws based on legal and spiritual reforms. Theodora was a particular trailblazer when it came to women's rights. They could now own property, divorce their husbands. She also passed laws that gave the death penalty for rape. Forced prostitution was made illegal and so were brothels. She created a convent for former prostitutes. The Justinian Code was a series of laws passed by the emperor in combination of previous Roman laws and juris decisions. Although most Byzantine citizens fared better under the code, there was a notable exception, Jewish people. Unfortunately, they lost their civil rights. Many Christians blamed Jews for Jesus' death and their refusal to recognize him as the Messiah, a belief unfortunately still held by some today. The Byzantine army was the most lethal army in the world except for China, and Justinian was able to force the Ostrogoths and the Vandals from Rome. He was also able to force the Vandals from North Africa and able to bring them back into the empire. His goal was to reunite the empire, but he was not successful. When the plague came in 546, it kills Theodora and nearly killed him. The Ostrogoths were able to regain Rome, with much of the Byzantine forces wiped out by the plague. Byzantine society was not as rigid as Rome's. Still, although there were no laws against class mobility, it was extremely rare. The empire was home to many ethnic groups, which included Scandinavians, Russians, Anglo-Saxons, Germans, Jews, and Muslims. Constantinople was a cosmopolitan city. There was an aristocracy of landowners, a military aristocracy, middle class of workers, and slaves that were either prisoners of war or purchased on the thriving slave market. One group of slaves were the eunuchs, castrated as boys to serve arist aristocratic households. Most became eunuchs as prisoners of war, but some were sold by their parents who sought upward mobility. As the empire began to decline due to invasions, many people moved to smaller towns. This is a map of the city. Note both Roman and Greek elements, such as the aqueducts, forums, cisterns, the Acropolis, and the Senate. Also note the Imperial Palace and its proximity to the church. 
This was done intentionally. Uh, they were built next to each other to symbolize the close proximity of the church and state. This is a picture of St. Sophia's or the Hagia Sophia, which was built by Justinian to symbolize that the church and the state are one and the same. Like Western Rome before her, Byzant the Byzantine world suffered from disease and invasions. With the Byzantine army weakened by the plagues, the Byzantines lost much territory to Muslim invaders, particularly the Seljuk and later the Ottoman Turks. As a result of these invasions, women became more confined and subordinate to men. The Byzantine church also became embroiled in questions of doctrine and the use of religious paintings in worship of Old Testament prophets, known as iconoclasm. Likewise, Monophysites believed Jesus was divine only, while Nestorians believed in the two natures of Jesus, one human, one divine. The controversy over iconoclasm splits the church. The Catholics in the West, ruled by the papacy in Rome, and the Eastern Orthodox in the East, ruled by the Byzantine emperors. Basil I was a soldier and servant of the empire who mur murders the emperor and claims the throne. He was from Macedonia, and therefore his rule and his descendants were known as the Macedonian era. He expands the empire to the east while fighting Muslims in the south. In the late 800s, he created the Cyrillic alphabet to translate the Bible into Slavic languages. These maps show the shrinking borders due to invasions, first by the Seljuk Turks and later the Ottoman Turks. Basil II allies with Kivian Rus, a state in Eastern Europe with Slavic populations being ruled by the Norse thanks to the Viking invasions. Kiev is the current capital of Ukraine. When Prince Vladimir, a friend of Basil II, is baptized as a Christian and marries Basil's sister, the Russian church becomes Eastern Orthodox with elements of Greece, Norse, and Slavic cultures. The Byzantine Empire doesn't officially end until 1453 when the Ottomans conquered and took control of Constantinople. However, the Eastern Orthodox Church lives on in Russia, Greece, and much of Eastern Europe. 